the 30th conference on organic agriculture in Tartu. This is really a great jubilee and I'm very sad that I cannot be among you. Nonetheless, I'm very happy that I can give you some thoughts for the conference. My topic will be how to manage sustainability in agroecosystems. The old concept of the role of agriculture has been to produce more, more, more and scientists and farmers have done that very successfully. But it hasn't really solved the problem. In, in the contrary, it has caused new problems, unexpected problems like the destruction of uh, so many of our ecosystem services we urgently need. So we have too much uh, nitrogen, too much phosphorus in our ecosystems. We have further fueled uh, the climate change. Uh, we have caused a lot of land use change. We have lost biodiversity on our planet. Everybody knows the problem here in the room. So a new concept, a new paradigm is needed. And the new paradigms which are under debate at the moment are on the one hand sustainable intensification as it was proposed by FAO, meaning producing more from less land and less resources with a lower uh, impact, negative impact on the environment. There are other concepts, maybe better ones like ecological intensification proposed by Pablo Titonel and this means using ecosystem services like soil fertility, like biodiversity uh, for increasing food production. This is in a way the organic concept and then we also talk about agroecology integrating all the societal aspects, the social aspects into a farming systems and farmers and consumers and citizens working together. So these are different concepts. Sustainable intensification is still quite productive or very productive and maybe agroecology is the least productive approach but for social and for ecological aspect may be the best one. And organic farming is not identical with uh, agroecology. It is somewhere in between all the systems. It can be very extensive, but it can also be very intensive, like for vegetable production in professional farms. The more sustainable we get in farming, the lower the yields are and we know from literature that organic for instance uh, in average produces about 20% less yields. So this deficit has to be compensated and for that we need to rethink the sustainability narrative. So eco efficiency is not the only aspect of, of sustainability. We should also talk about sufficiency, meaning that we need to rethink the way how we consume. For instance, do we really need to waste so much food? 30% of all food is produced for the waste bin. And uh, do we really need to eat so much uh, meat uh, produced with cereals in competition with human nutrition? I think, and we have modeled that, that with a combination of changing eating habits and organic farming, we can produce enough food without using more agricultural land. The second approach to address this yield deficit is innovation in organic and in all sustainable farming system. We need more specific innovation. That's why research is very important. 
And we should include all kinds of in innovations, from social innovations, ecological innovations, and technological innovations. I will give you three examples for innovation which really could contribute to sustainability and making uh, low input and organic farming more productive. The first example is digitalization. Everybody talks about digitalization, uh, precision farming, robot technology as being the future of our farming system. But we can use uh, all this modern technology in a stupid way, like on the right side, or we could use it in a very intelligent way, like on the left side. The, the example of a 3,000 hectare farm in Argentina, where they practiced uh, contour and strip farming and recreated from a monocropping system a wonderful landscape and a very productive farming system, a crop rotation in space and a crop rotation in time. So it's all about how we use uh, technology and how we redesign our farming systems. And uh, a second very effective approach to modernize and to make organic farming and low input farming systems more productive is breeding. So uh, we need different breeding goals, different breeding strategies. You can see here uh, the concept we apply at FIBEL, not only breeding with farmers, participatory breeding, but also breeding for pest and disease resistance. So all interactions with, uh, with above ground microbes and above ground pests and insects. And secondly, we breed for best interaction between plants so that we have an excellent weed suppression. Or we might breed for mixed cropping systems or for excellent interaction with the soil microbiome. So the, all the bacteria, the, the fungi in the soil in order to have pe best uptake of, of nutrient elements. A third aspect of innovation should be that innovation should make the life of farmers easier and should help farmers to save time. This is an excellent example of an old biocontrol methods with polyphagous wasp, trichogramma, against corn borer. In former times it was applied by hand, which needed a lot of time per hectare. And in modern times now a new technology is used, uh, thrones to spread the DX of the wasp so that it takes only 20 minutes per hectare and has become a very efficient and a very effective method to control corn borer. To conclude, organic farming is the best way to solve the environmental and social problems of agriculture. The lower yields have to be addressed by reducing food waste and by eating less meat. And most importantly, there is a huge potential for innovation. This innovation has to be created by more research. I'm very happy that we have such an excellent cooperation with Estonia, because Estonia is among the leaders of organic farming in Europe and worldwide. Much more than 20% of organic land. This is a huge success. We from Switzerland admire this success story and we want to learn from you. So be sure I will come back to Estonia maybe next year at the next conference.